I wanted to share my childhood uh, that you and I went over a little bit. Uh, I want I want to help people because you know I don't care who you are, what part you're at in your life. We all have issues that we're dealing with. So I wanted to share my childhood, and then I wanted to share, you know, the the addictions that I had when I was younger. I had uh, I had an issue with alcohol. I got addicted to betting sports, and then later on in my life, uh, as I became more mature and I was able to overcome those things, you know. Uh, I got in business. Uh, I've been successful with that, and uh, you know I've become a fairly successful sports better. So, uh, and then I went to prison, which I had to share that experience because when I went into prison, there was only one positive thing that came out of that. Joe, I mentored around two dozen men, and some of these men have been in prison twenty, twenty-five years, and. Uh, it really opened my eyes. You know, every time there was a visitation where I was at in prison, I had someone who visited me. 60% of the people in prison never get a visit. But these men that I mentored, uh, not a one of them wanted to go back to prison. But I spent a lot of one-on-one time with them, and the closer they would get to release, uh, you know, the more apprehensive they became. I mean, tough guys, you know, I mean, tough guys, you know, rip guys that been in prison 20, 25 years, they would become very emotional. They didn't want to go back to prison, but they they knew they were probably going to come back to prison because they had no way to earn a living. The only thing they'd learned in prison was how to become a better criminal. And, yeah, they were going to get out. While they were in the halfway house, they were going to get a job someplace making minimum wage. But as soon as that was over, they had to do something to feed their families. And they, you know, they, didn't, they had no job skill set. So when I got out of prison, I knew I had to try to do something about that, okay? And uh, so I got involved with Harry Reid when I originally got out of prison, former senator from Nevada, former you know, majority leader. Uh, and I got involved with Harry because clearly uh, Democrats are in power and, knew, and I wanted to put vocational schools in the federal prisons. And I was willing to put up some of my money initially to get it started. And, uh, and unfortunately, Senator Reed pa- he passed away before we were able to get anything done. Well, a former sheriff in, in Las Vegas, Bill Young, he, uh, he told me, he said, Bill, he said, the best reentry program in the United States, it, it, it's in Las Vegas. He said, it's called Hope for Prisoners. I said, well, I never heard of it. He said, well, I want you to meet this guy that runs it. So there's a guy who runs it. His name is John Ponder who's been in prison twi- himself twice. He started his program in 2012, Joe. The recidivism rate is only 5%. So, you know, being a leery guy, being a gambler, you know there's a lot of people looking for your money these days. We all know that. Uh, but I met with John Ponder and uh, the uh, became really impressed with him. Uh, but the more I learned about him and, and the program and what he's done, I got superly impressed. And uh, <clears throat> so my wife got and I got more involved. We we made some uh, financial assistance available, and they were able to, to add to some of the things they were doing as far as, you know, teaching and stuff. This is an 18-month program these people are in, by the way. And the first thing they do, almost every one of these people have an issue with drugs. First thing they do is get them off of drugs. Second thing they do, they get them right with their families. You got to be right with your family, and that's the reason this program works so good. And every month we have a graduation there. The graduation, Joe, was held at Metropolitan Police Headquarters in downtown Las Vegas. There's usually fifty to seventy-five police officers there. Uh, come to find out, there's two hundred police officers in Las Vegas Metro that are mentoring these people now. A typical graduation, you've got the mayor there, you've got the district attorney there, you've got a judge there, you've got the head of corrections for Nevada, sometimes the governor's there if he's in town. And uh, usually you got about a thousand people there, friends, and, and you got a lot of mentors in, in the Las Vegas area that come. They come up and they receive their diplomas, and the second that's over, there's a job fair, and they all have jobs before they leave. And then in, in, in these graduations, they'll invariably always have someone who's been out of the program for a year or two years or five years. They'll come up and speak, and they'll talk about their life and how it changed their life. 
So uh, the current governor we have, he was a former sheriff that was involved in this program. Uh, his name is Joe Lombardo. And uh, so Joe recognized how important it is for these people to have a job skill set when they come out of prison also. So uh, we spoke to him and the head of corrections in Nevada, and uh, they and we now are putting vocational schools in Nevada prisons, and uh, uh, they're going to be able to get certified to be an electrician, a plumber, air condition uh, repair, truck driver, and uh, when we decided to do this, of course it takes money. There's another family in Las Vegas, the Engelstad family. And uh, so they agreed to put up $2 million. Uh, Susan and I agreed to put up $2 million, And the state uh, agreed to put up a million. So the night they made this announcement, uh, I, asked, I was asked to come and speak. And uh, I got there, and there was another speaker. Her name was Alice Johnson. Do you know Alice Johnson? No. Alice Johnson is the lady that uh, I was in prison at the time. But President Trump pardoned her. And he pardoned her because her case got brought to his attention by Kim Kardashian. And uh, so Alice Johnson got up and spoke, and uh, I was blown away with her, and I was blown away with her speech. I think she was from Mississippi, I think, or Louisiana, one of the two. And she'd gone to prison for being, quote, a drug mule. And if I understood her correctly, and I think I did, I think her role as a drug mule was... She was she was conveying messages between the guy selling drugs and the guy supplying drugs, and she was strictly on the phone conveying messages. Never touched a drug, never sold a drug. First time offense they gave her life in prison with no parole. Whoa! First time offense. So she was in prison, I think, about twenty two years, and uh, had become a model uh, person in prison. I think she become a minister, and she got pardoned. And uh, but that was. That was it, that went into either all or most of the prisons in the United States that night. So we followed it up. We went out to Indian Springs State Prison in Nevada, and we walked in the gymnasium. I was there with John Ponder and myself, and uh, and there's I don't know five, six hundred, eight hundred inmates there, and uh, when we originally walked in, we started talking to them. You could kind of see, you know, they were kind of disinterested. Some were listening, but most weren't. But when John got up and he got to talking about what we were going to do, you could see they started to get more interested. And when I got up there, you know, I said, well, you guys are probably trying to figure out what this old gray to do here is uh, to talk to you about today. So I kind of explained to them while I was there what my background was, 